<laughs> All right, get out of the car. This is your last chance to get out of the car or I'm placing you. No, you're not placing me under arrest. Or I'm placing you under arrest. I'm calling someone. You're under arrest for, for what? obstruction. I didn't do nothing. All right, so if you resist any. Welcome back to U.S. Corrupt Cops, where we expose the stories of those who should protect and serve, but betray the badge. Today, we're diving into two shocking cases of corruption that's set to cost their city millions. If you like this video, press 1. On the morning of September 20, 2019, Nevada resident Asili Lagervale and her daughters, Asili and Eight, arrived in Castro Valley, California, after a night-long drive to ensure that Asili and Eight could attend their college classes. Ms. Lagervale parked her rental car in a handicapped parking spot, displaying a visible placard on the rearview mirror. While resting in their vehicle outside a Starbucks parking lot and preparing to enter the store for coffee and to use the restroom, Deputy Stephen Holland and Deputy Monica Pope of the Alameda County Sheriff's Office approached the vehicle. The ensuing interaction was recorded on Deputy Holland's body camera. Hi. Hi. How are you? Fine. What are you guys doing here? Uh, waiting to go to Starbucks in a second. Why? Oh, we have, is there a problem? We can't, well, can't so, sit here? Well, actually, let me tell you why I'm here. Mm. Okay. Mm. I've been having auto break-ins in this parking lot every okay. morning around this time. Thank you very much. So, I've been, so I've been driving around here. Okay. okay. And I noticed that you guys aren't doing nothing but hanging out. Yeah, I just got here from and Vegas. And so, okay. Well, that this can, morning, I've been driving all night. Okay. It takes well, eight hours to get here. Well, relax. That's my reason why I'm talking to you. I'm I, from here, so I'm, I'm not. Okay. This, this is a, we're in a car from the Bay Area from Oakland. It's so not a Nevada I'm, car. No, I'm not in Nevada. I'm okay. Not, you have your ID on you? Yeah. Okay, so wait a minute. Now, why are you asking for my ID? You just explained to me about the break-in. Right. But why did you explain to me about the, um, my ID? What did I do? What kind of crime did I commit? What kind of crime did you commit? Yeah, I'm asking well, you. You have asked me for my ID. Yeah, you have to give me your ID. Why do I have to give you my ID? I have to give you my ID because I haven't did anything. You you started talking about a break-in. Okay. I thank you for telling, informing me that. Right. I informed you that I'm resting because I'm about to go into Starbucks, right? Mm -hmm. I informed you I've been driving all night, right? Well, Starbucks has been open for about two hours. It's actually been open since five. I checked my um, GPS. Okay. okay. Are you doing anything wrong? No, I'm not. So then what's the big deal? I don't have to give you my ID. I'm not doing anything uh, Yeah, you do. No, I don't. I know the law. I don't have to give you my ID. I'm not doing anything. Deputy Holland demanded that Ms. Lagervale show him her ID, to which Ms. Lagervale responded that she was not obligated to provide identification since she had not committed any wrongdoing. In California, there is no stop and identify law that penalizes individuals for refusing to identify themselves to police during a lawful Terry stop. Even if such a law existed, a court would likely find that the officers lacked reasonable suspicion to detain Ms. Lagervale and her daughters based on the suspected vehicle break-ins, especially since the officers later indicated that the suspects were black males. Ms. Lagervale clearly stated that she and her daughters were about to enter Starbucks. Section 12.951 of the California Vehicle Code mandates that the driver of a vehicle shall have the valid driver's license issued to him or her in his or her immediate possession at all times when driving a motor vehicle upon a highway and present his or her license for examination upon demand of a peace officer enforcing the provisions of this code. However, since Ms. Lagervale was parked and not driving, it is evident from the interaction that Deputy Holland was not attempting to enforce the vehicle code, but was instead investigating Ms. Lagervale and her daughters for possible criminal activity. Additionally, Section 22.511.56 of the California Vehicle Code requires that someone using a disabled placard, like Ms. Lagervale, shall, upon request of a peace officer, present identification and evidence of the issuance of that placard to that person. In this case, Deputy Holland did not ask for proof of the placard's issuance. He merely requested Ms. Lagervale's identification within the context of investigating the vehicle break-ins rather than verifying the validity of the placard. Consequently, a court would likely rule that Ms. Lagervale was not obligated to present identification to Deputy Holland in this scenario. I did anything wrong. So what you're doing now is leading me to believe that you might be doing something wrong. No, I'm not doing that, so don't try to trump up no charges. I, I saw that get your phone out, so I recorded. Why are you getting so worked up? Because I gotta have protection. 
because I don't know where this is about to go. I've well, got to have protection. Well, it's not going to go it's anywhere if you anything. cooperate. Right. Everything's being recorded. Exactly, and I'm not doing anything. That's what you hear me tell my daughters. Start recording as well. So why are you making this a big deal? This can be a completely positive encounter. Exactly. Okay. I'm not going to give you my ID because I'm a good identity. Do you have a valid driver's license? Yes, I do. So are you going to refuse to give me your ID? I am because I have a identity. Call your superior. Call your supervisor. I don't have to do that. Yes, you do have to do that. Make sure you record that because I'm going, as soon as I leave here, I'm going to 150th and I'm going to the um, sheriff's department. We're being harassed for nothing. It's not harassment. Yes, it is harassment. Dude. Well, guess what? I, I'm not in any rush. I can hang out here till you want to give me your ID. I'm not. I want you to call your sheriff. I want you to call me or call your um, superiors. I sell it. Um, um, well, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Call 911. Call 911. What, what, what is I'm going on here? No, no, we're not We're not doing that. Okay, everyone in this car is detained. You can go back in the car and wait. Or, or you can go in handcuffs and go in my car. Okay, sit in the car or you're going in handcuffs. I'm not dealing with this. I'm going in handcuffs and I have to use directions. You can sit, you can sit. Last chance. Sit in the car or you're going in handcuffs. Yeah, 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 that's that's that was one of the things. You're being a really too assessive right about now. You're being real assessive right now. That's okay. one of the reasons why we okay. stopped here too. For me to get coffee and I was telling her to get up so she go to the restroom. You're not going to do that. You're not going to violate or victimize us. They don't want to okay. listen to us, so let's go ahead and okay. detain these two. No, you're not going to detain them. We haven't did anything. We haven't. We have not did anything. Call I'm going to start the car. Get out of the car. No, I'm not. Get out of the car. 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 I'm rolling the window down. I'll get out. Just don't, don't pull on me. I'll get out. All right, get out of the car. This is your last chance to get out of the car or I'm placing you. No, you're not placing me under arrest. Or I'm, I'm placing you under me. arrest. I'm calling someone. Get out of the car. I am. You don't have to pull me. I'm getting out now. Then get out. Stop it. Then get out. Stop it. Stand right here. Put your hands behind your back. You're being detained. No, I'm not being detained. For what? I'm you're being detained. For what? Put your hand behind your back or you're going to go to jail. No, I'm not going to jail. We need an attorney right now. Record everything. Get an attorney. We haven't done anything. Don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Put your hands behind your back or you're going to jail. Put your hands behind your back or you're going to jail. Don't worry. That's fine. We have a lawsuit. Um, excuse me, officer. Can you can you make some sense out of this? We haven't done anything. We haven't done anything. All of a sudden we're getting arrested. I don't have a weapon on me. I'm just checking. I asked for his superior, his supervisor. I asked for a supervisor. Grab a seat. This is not how things work, ma'am. No, what are you talking about? We haven't did anything. Take your feet you, you don't demand what we do. No, I, I'm not demanding anything. The officers handcuffed all three logger veils and placed them in the back of separate police vehicles, asserting that they were being detained, not arrested, and held them for approximately an hour. While an officer handcuffing an individual and placing them in a police vehicle does not automatically elevate a Terry stop detention to an arrest, Certain circumstances can transform the nature of the seizure from a Terry stop, which only requires reasonable suspicion, to a de facto arrest, which demands probable cause. In other words, it is unconstitutional for an officer to detain someone under conditions that amount to an arrest without probable cause. Even if the officer claims the detention was not an arrest, courts assess factors such as the scope, intrusiveness, and duration of the detention to determine if it constitutes an arrest. In the 2022 case of United States v. Guerrero, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which oversees California, upheld the denial of a motion to suppress evidence because two of the three judges on the panel concluded that the defendant's seizure was constitutionally reasonable, albeit for different reasons. Each judge provided a separate opinion on the matter. Circuit Judge Gould stated that the one-hour detention was more than a brief stop, similar to a Terry stop, because the length of the detention and the use of handcuffs under the circumstances transformed Guerrero's detention into a de facto arrest. Conversely, Circuit Judge B, while ultimately agreeing that Guerrero's detention was reasonable, argued that it did not constitute a de facto arrest. Judge B based his interpretation on the fact that the detention was extended only to wait for Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and firearms investigators to arrive, which he deemed a reasonable delay according to past Ninth Circuit precedent. Similarly, since the logger veils were held in handcuffs and police cars for about an hour without waiting for specialized federal officers, they would have a strong case that their detention exceeded a Terry stop and amounted to an arrest. It is improbable that the officers had the necessary reasonable suspicion to conduct a Terry stop, and it is nearly certain they lacked probable cause to make any arrests.
because you're so not what did I do to be arrested? What led up to this? Oh, Can you answer that honestly? You cannot. Uh, you won't let me. You won't shut up. Listen to me. Deputy Holland opened the rental vehicle's door and appeared to search at least one bag inside the sedan. Later in the interaction, the officers conducted a thorough search of the entire vehicle, including the trunk and all three Lagervale's purses, and collected their identification cards. Generally, the Fourth Amendment requires officers to obtain a warrant before searching a vehicle. However, there are several exceptions to this rule and officers typically can perform a warrantless search of a vehicle with the driver's or owner's valid consent under exigent circumstances, incident to a lawful arrest, or when they have probable cause to believe the vehicle contains evidence of criminal activity. Importantly, these exceptions do not permit a vehicle search solely to obtain an individual's identification if they refuse to provide it. While one might argue that such a search could be allowed if refusal to identify oneself is a criminal offense, the Supreme Court of California upheld a limited search of the glove compartment, the area underneath the driver's seat, and the area beneath the front passenger seat for an individual's identification when the individual refused to identify themselves and the officer was preparing to issue a traffic citation and therefore needed to learn the true identity of the person to be cited. In the 2002 case of Indre Arturo D., none of the logger veils were being cited for a traffic violation. Notably, although the Arturo D. case was considered good law at the time of this encounter, it was later overturned in the 2019 case of People v. Lopez. In Lopez, the Supreme Court of California acknowledged that California was the only state to recognize an exception to the Fourth Amendment's warrant requirement for suspicionless traffic stop vehicle searches, and that the desire to obtain a driver's identification following a traffic stop does not constitute an independent categorical exception to the Fourth Amendment's warrant requirements. Therefore, since the officers did not search the vehicle under a recognized exception to the warrant requirement, a court would almost certainly find that the vehicle search was unconstitutional. After silencing the audio on his body camera, Deputy Holland discussed the situation with Deputy Pope and other responding officers. According to the Alameda County Sheriff's Office General Order No. 8.17, officers may use mute mode in extended video situations, including search warrants, housing unit searches, and investigative activities where no suspect interaction is occurring. However, the policy mandates that for any mute mode activation for an extended operation, supervisor approval must be sought. Additionally, the policy states that mute mode may also be useful when audio recording should be deactivated based on articulable reasons, such as sensitive intelligence gathering, when discussing sensitive, tactical, or confidential law enforcement information, or other investigative purposes. The policy further requires that, when utilizing mute mode, members shall verbally announce they are placing the camera in mute mode prior to activating the feature, that the reason for this activation will be reasonably announced as well, and that, absent an extended video situation with supervisor approval or an incident where the member has determined audio recording may be stopped based on articulable reasons, mute mode shall not be used. It is evident that Deputy Holland's use of mute mode on his body camera in this instance does not comply with this policy. However, it's important to note that the current body camera policy was last updated in December 2022, and a 2017 version of the policy did not include these mute mode provisions. Therefore, it is unclear when these requirements were implemented, 
and it's possible that at the time of this interaction in 2019, the policy may not have restricted Deputy Holland's use of the mute feature. As previously mentioned, the officers searched the vehicle, including the Loggervale's purses and the trunk, and obtained their identification cards. During this search, Deputy Holland's body camera remained muted. The officers detained the Loggervales for about an hour before releasing them without pressing any charges. The Loggervales allege that they sustained abrasions on their arms and wrists during the incident. On July 14, 2020, the Loggervales filed a lawsuit against the officers involved and the Alameda County Sheriff's Office, citing assault, battery, false arrest, and violations of constitutional rights, among other claims. On March 1, 2023, a federal jury unanimously ruled in favor of the Loggervales, awarding them a total of $8.25 million in damages. Specifically, the jury found Deputy Holland and Alameda County jointly liable to Asili for $2.75 million and to Ate and Asili for $2 million each. Additionally, Deputy Pope and Alameda County were held jointly liable to Ate and Asili for $750,000 each. As of the time of writing, the Alameda County Sheriff's Office has not announced any disciplinary actions against Deputy Holland or Deputy Pope. In fact, both deputies have been promoted since the incident. Overall, the Alameda County deputies receive an F for ordering Ms. Loggervale to show her identification when it was likely not necessary, unlawfully detaining the Loggervales without reasonable suspicion or probable cause, unnecessarily using handcuffs, and placing them in the back of police vehicles, and searching the rental vehicle in violation of the Fourth Amendment. While the exact motivations of the deputies are unclear, given that Deputy Holland claimed to be investigating a series of break-ins involving male suspects, it is reasonable to conclude that he detained the Loggervales for asserting their rights and refusing to comply with his unlawful ID request. Handcuffing the Loggervales and placing them in the back of cruisers was excessive and seemed to be a punitive response to their non-compliance. Although Deputy Holland was the primary offender, Deputy Pope and the other responding officers also deserve an F for supporting Deputy Holland's unreasonable and illegal actions, likely infringing upon the Constitution themselves. The Loggervales deserve an A for standing up against the officers' unconstitutional demands for identification advocating for their constitutional rights in a firm and mostly respectful manner, and taking swift and effective legal action against the officers involved. It is highly unusual for such cases to proceed to a jury trial, as they are typically resolved through settlements before reaching the trial phase. The fact that this case was heard by a jury allowed the Loggervales to receive a public verdict, affirming that their rights were violated without any non-disclosure agreements hiding the Alameda County officer's misconduct. Although the reason for the lack of a settlement is unclear, the Loggervales deserve commendation for their patience and dedication to obtaining justice through the often slow-moving U.S. legal system. This case serves as an encouragement for others who have had their rights violated by the police to follow their example. Next, in 2019, Roland and his stepson were attempting to repair a customer's car that had broken down in the church parking lot where she worked. Instead of approaching the man and asking questions, the church's security guard called 911. Shortly after, officers Krista McCabe and Cameron Perot of the Huntsville Police Department arrived at the scene. What are y'all doing? Huh? What are y'all doing? Get in the car. Is this your car? Three three eight drive all day. One of my customers. One of your customers? Don't tell. Yeah. I was over here earlier. Yeah. Whose car is that? That's mine. The black one? Yeah. After observing the men working for some time, Officer McCabe asked them to identify themselves though the reason for this request was unclear. Take a break for me real fast and y'all have driver's license or IDs on you? I ain't gonna submit to no ID. Listen, you call me right now. Listen, I ain't got time for this. I'm all worried. I don't mean to be meat rude or nothing. Okay, no, you, I don't mean you to be, do need to give me your ID no, or driver's license. Listen, I don't want you to run run me in and it, uh, for, for nothing. Are you, are you refusing me to give, are you refusing to give me your ID or driver's license? I'm telling you, if you license? call this lady on her, on, on this Step car. Step over that one. Come on, man. 
See y'all, see here's y'all playing. You're playing right now. We, we, we don't got time for this. We really don't got time for this. Assuming that Roland had the time to comply, Officer Perot grabbed him from behind and placed him under arrest. You don't understand the law. I got to go. Alright, I'm gonna do your cuff yeah, and you on, twist yeah. your wrist around. No, we'll get your ID. Keep your wrist like that. Alright. You're under arrest for right. obstruction. I didn't do nothing. Alright, so if you resist any further, you will also get charged with resisting arrest. You understand? Listen, I'll get my ID. I'll tell you what's going on. This is ridiculous. I'm trying to get a customer's car here. I'm in a rush. Y'all down in my pocket for no reason. No, I, I said my ID is either, is in my car. You're not going to get placed in my car without knowing what's in your pocket. Not 47 You shut up. Is that how you talk to someone? Is that all officers supposed to talk to someone? Yeah, like we're here doing a custodial I, search I, on you. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. What y'all need to do is call Ms. Noel Patel right there in this office right here and hand me the key. That's I already to explained to you. All right. I mean, I am such a rush. Right, come on. This ain't necessary. This ain't necessary. It is necessary. Roland had not committed any crime, and an officer has no authority to demand a person's identification without suspicion of criminal activity. Unfortunately, the law enforcement officers demonstrated a poor understanding of the laws they are sworn to enforce, accusing Roland of obstructing an investigation simply because he refused to provide his identification. All the obstruction. I, I take, listen, I didn't do anything. I, listen, please, 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 yes, please, 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 please. I already told him that he's under arrest. This is ridiculous, man. You know what I'm saying? She, she, I, look, I didn't do a crime, but she's trying to arrest somebody for not doing a crime. She's trying to arrest me for obstruction. Of, for what? I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Huh? That's what I'm saying. She's down. Man, please listen to me. Get down. Please listen. No, you don't want to listen to us. I'm so trying to explain to, to you. I'm, sir. I'm trying to explain. Okay, once again, uh, just have a seat right there for me, okay? Yeah, I'm on the Do you thing, have huh? no? I can use your ID. Yeah, Thank you. Okay. So, all right, he he is going to jail. All right. Yes. Okay. Well, that that sucks. I mean, good people go to jail too. Good people, bad people. If they break the law, they break the law. They go to jail. All right. I asked him multiple times for his ID or driver's license, but I know not. Yep. Okay. Then he refused. I asked him again if he was sure that he was refusing to give it to me. He confirmed that he was refusing to give it to me. And at that point, he is obstructing an investigation and he is going to jail. All right. I'm out here because I got a call stating that that vehicle, okay, is an employee here. And you guys were inside the car and you're not supposed to be inside the car. Okay. And that's fine. All right. But I'm still here making sure that you're not doing anything illegal but it took me now how long have i been out here like five six seven ish minutes okay i'm just now getting to tell you why i'm here because of his action all right i'm just now i'm just now getting to explain what i'm investigating because he deterred me from doing that all right. Officer McCabe proceeded to the church to speak with the individual who had called 911. Oh. Okay, so whose car is it that is an employee? It's Ms. Dola. She works here. Which at the car daycare. is it that's hers? The red one. Okay, is she here? No, ma'am. They've already went home for the day. Okay, well, a pit, what's her last name? I'm not sure. Is it Perez, maybe? Can it, does anybody know what it is? Cause I'm just a security guard and all I seen was him jacking up a car. Apparently he has his own body shop and he's over here picking it up to bring to his body shop to fix it. He actually he refused to, to give me his identification oh. so that's why he's going to jail. Okay. Um, I mean it may be completely legit that he is out here just picking up the car and it's with her consent but when he tells me no, that he's not giving me his identification to identify who he is, then 
that's in trouble. They let him know you got something wrong. Yeah, yeah. Officer Perot handed the officer his phone and she called the vehicle's owner. My car, Kajal. DeKalb County. This is Officer McKay with HTD, okay? We got a call of a man working on your wife's car and I was out here and I needed to verify that this man was supposed to be working on her car, all right? Okay, that, that's all I needed to know was that he was supposed to be working on her car, all right? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. They said you're going to jail for obstruction of there, there is. You refused multiple times to identify yourself. Yes. You can argue that point in court. Now, what do you have to say? What, else, what do you need to release to yourself? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Really? I mean... Okay, you I have nothing know, else to say? I don't know what to okay, say. Cool. Sir, sir, okay, cool. Sir. Okay, cool. I don't know what to say. What do you need for well, obviously, he doesn't want to talk about that. He wants to talk about him being charged. So I have the keys to that car on the top of the car. You're free to go. Remarkably, neither of these unprofessional and discourteous officers seem to grasp the most basic aspects of their duties. Nearly 1,000 videos on this channel illustrate that such behavior is widespread across departments throughout the U.S. As a result of this incident, Roland was charged with obstructing governmental operations. Friends, like I said, if a cop asks you to identify yourself, just go in and you give your what, you ID. Know, you know what? Uh, looking back, and then when you said, you know what? Look, look, I don't need my name ran. I didn't want my name ran. Red flag. The unfounded charges were eventually dropped. Roland then filed a lawsuit against the city and the two Huntsville officers for wrongful arrest. Initially, a federal judge at the district court granted the officers qualified immunity and dismissed the lawsuit. However, on appeal, the federal appellate judges rejected the officers' claim that they had probable cause to arrest Roland, emphasizing that Alabamians are not required to carry identification simply because police request it and refusing to do so is not a crime. Instead, this incident appears to be a knee-jerk reaction stemming from an inflated ego within an immature, entitled, and uninformed police force. Judge Wilson wrote that it has been clearly established for decades that police can ask any question they choose, but the public is not obligated to answer, and no law requires individuals to carry a physical ID card. The judges concluded that the officers were not entitled to qualified immunity and sent the case back to the district court. After a two-day trial in October 2024, U.S. District Judge Elias Burke ruled that Krista McCabe and Cameron Perot had falsely arrested Roland. A jury awarded him a total of $777,000, but the officers themselves did not have to pay Roland as they were shielded by qualified immunity. Instead, the city of Huntsville indemnified the officers, choosing to have their constituents pay Roland from their taxes for the officers' wrongful actions. Previously, the department expressed disappointment with the appellate court's decision to remove qualified immunity, implying that the officers had upheld American values. To preserve their reputation, the Huntsville police stated, the department respects the court's decision and will incorporate additional training to ensure our practices align with the court's ruling. This statement suggests compliance without acknowledging that their actions violated the principles of liberty or that they had learned from the incident. It appears that neither officer faced any disciplinary measures from the department. I'd like to hear your thoughts on all of this. Even better, if you have friends who are police officers or support the police, share this video with them and ask whether they would defend these officers or the department's actions and responses. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to stay updated on more stories of corruption and justice. See you in the next one.